Especially when you're learning JavaScript, it's really important to be testing your skills, and that's what I've got for you today, some JavaScript challenges on array methods. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. You can see here that this is now the second challenge. I did a challenge last week on JavaScript DOM uh, elements that you can kind of interact with the DOM through JavaScript. And now on this challenge two, number blank, if you want to jump in on here, you can go ahead and get the code right here uh, and just download it here and open it up in your favorite code editor. That's what I've got over here. And then I've, I'm going to go ahead and click go live. It should just open it up right here. And there we go. All right, perfect. Now inside here, you're going to see an index.html page and then a console.js page. Now I've just got this to where you can basically reference it like this so it's easy to console.log and make sure that you're getting what you expect. Uh, and now that I got this open over here, let me go ahead and close this down. I'm going to open up the console and then pull this up all the way just like this. Let's refresh. Okay, perfect. So what I've got in this is everything broken down into two different sections. And uh, you can see we've got beginner challenges and I've got 10 of those here and then I've got intermediate challenges. Both of them are just working off different arrays. In this case, we've got an array of names, and down below we've got a table called peeps. So I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this one out so we only see this one, and this is how it's going to start. So what we're gonna do is just kind of do this in these two sections. So let me go ahead and give you a second to do these 10 on the beginner challenges, and then I will walk you through it. So go ahead and do that, pause the video, and I'll be right back with you as soon as you're done. All right, hopefully that went well for you. Here we go, let's go ahead and just work through this together. First of all, we're gonna add a name to the beginning of the names array. We can do that with a method called unshift. So I'll say dot unshift, and then we'll just add a name. Let's call it something like, I don't know, uh, Timmy or something like that, all right? So Timmy is added to the front. And just to make sure that I'm always getting what I expect, I'm gonna go ahead and just console log it down here. And now you should see here that now I've got Timmy. And in fact, this is also changed, so I don't even need to change that because uh, that, um, modifies the original array. So you see it right there. All right, second of all, add a name to the end of the array. Well, that's just something called push. So push, and let's call this something like Jahid or something. All right, so Jahid is added to the end. Perfect. Remove the name you added to the beginning of the names array. We can do that with another one called shift, just like that, and that should remove it. And again, that console.log at the bottom should show us that. Remove the name you added to the end of the names array. So basically get it back to how it started. We can do that again with something called pop. All right, so if you're familiar with arrays, that hopefully wasn't too difficult. We've got six left here on this beginner section. Create a new array called lowercase names with each case uh, name lowercase. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that lowercase names. That's the array we're supposed to create. And there are a couple different ways to basically take the old array and get it into a new array. I think the way I'm going to do it is just to spread it. So use the spread operator here. We're going to take the names array itself. So if I were to just console.log this to start with, you can see that it's going to be the exact same. This one's the lowercase names array. This is the original. Uh, now what I want to do is come in here and let's go ahead and map over each of the items. Not amp, but map. And we'll just take each name and we'll say name.2 lowercase like that. And that should lowercase all the names. And you see that's what it does right here. All right, and uh, this reminds me that there may be other ways to do what I'm doing here. It's, it's not like one way is right and one way is wrong. If yours looks like this, you did it right. Uh, but this is the way I'm choosing to do it. And I'm kind of doing this live as I go through it with you. Uh, but there may be a more compressed way to do some of these things. There may be a more verbose way to do some of these things. It's, a, it's really okay however you choose to do it. Obviously, as you get better with JavaScript, you'll find that some methods are preferred. But trying to figure out the perfect method every single time can sometimes get in your way of learning. Uh, really just focus on getting the outcome you want. And then later you can work on refactoring it. And hopefully as you learn, you'll find better ways to do things. And you might have suggestions even uh, versus what I'm doing here. All right, here we go. Uh, back to the names array. And this reminds me that as you're working with these challenges, I typically always reference the original array unless I say something different, uh, just so you know. All right, so sort the names array. That one's pretty easy. I just come in here and say sort like that, and that should work. There we go. All right, and I got rid of that other console log, so it disappeared. So now it should be sorted. Um, yep, that looks all right. Find the index of Chris. Well, all I have to do here is, uh, let's see, let's just call it const Chris index like that. And then I'll say names.index of, again, another method that lives on these arrays, Chris. All right, now this uh, makes me think of something. So let me go ahead and just uh, switch this up a bit and talk you through something really briefly. If you're like, where are you getting all these uh, you know, uh, methods? I'm not sure how they live on this thing. I'm gonna come in here and console.dir this instead. And what this does is essentially wrap it in an object. And what I get is all the items listed out here. The other thing I get though is access to the prototype. Basically, this is what 
lives on every single uh, array in JavaScript. And you can see here I've got a bunch of things. If they have this little F here, that's a function. And again, if you're familiar with JavaScript, this may be super old news. Um, you can see here on other things I have a property. This is the length of the array. So all of these are basically just telling me how I can interact with the data in this array. And what I'm doing is just using these different methods that live on this. And if you're ever not sure what you have access to, uh, one of the easiest ways to do this is to come in here. Let's come in here. Uh, we'll say names dot. And then in VS Code, I'm going to hit Control and Spacebar. And it gives me access to all of these things that show up over here in the DOM as well, along with other things that I might have access to in VS Code. So you can see here, this is a property. All these with like the cubes are uh, methods. And if you're not sure what one of them does, you can click into here. And in VS Code, you can just hover and it walks you through that. Or you can come in here and Control click, and it actually will show you kind of the actual uh, the actual code behind that behind everything if you want. So just so you know, that's where we're getting all these methods. And if you're not sure what a method is, it's just a function that lives on a prototype or on kind of like a master class for this whole thing. All right, console.log, let's go back here. Actually, yeah, log works for me. Okay, so there we go. Back to what we were supposed to be doing. So Chris index, I never actually did that. So that should be index of one. And there it is. Cool. So that worked. Let me get rid of that console log. Create a new array called after Chris, const after Chris, and with all the names after Chris in the names array. So the easiest thing to do here is to say names.slice, I think. So let's do that. Names.slice, Chris index plus one. And by slicing it, I'm not creating, I'm not modifying the original array. I'm I'm uh, copying, creating a, a copy of it. So this should stay the exact same. And if I were to console.log this, only this one should be different and it should include everything after Chris index. And there you go. So I get here all the way to the end, right here. But you'll notice that, again, the original array is not changed. If I come back over here, though, now I want to alter the original array. And the easiest way to do that is with something called splice. So names.splice, and then I'm going to say Chris index. So basically, I'm going to start at this point, and you can give it an ending value. In fact, if I come in here, you'll see this. You can give it a start number. That's what I did. And then if you want to, you can give it an ending number, not the ending uh, value. I think that's how slice works, if I remember correctly. All right, so now if I do this and I save it, then this one should just show me only those before Chris, which in this case is just Anna. Now I'm going to return true if the names array contains Chris and false if it does not. So it doesn't, so it should be false. So let me come in here and let's just call this something like includes Chris. I'll say names.includes and I can just write Chris like this. And then let's come in here, let's see, and let's console.log this. There we go. It does not include Chris. Cool. So that's all done, those 10 challenges. If you uh, have questions about that, let me know. I'm happy to do videos explaining some of those a little bit more, but that's a good starting point for beginners. All right. Let me give you a, a few seconds to do these intermediate challenges. Again, unless it says otherwise, we're always referencing this peeps array, um, but I'll let you do that, and then I'll be right back with you. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm going to come on down here, uh, add a Boolean property is awesome for each peep and set it true if the person has at least three favorite numbers or false if not all right so we've got a little bit to do here let's take the peeps like this and we'll say for each so i'm going to loop over these and basically do something for each of the things here so i'm going to take we'll just call that p for peep all right for each person we're going to say uh p dot is awesome so this will create this property if it doesn't exist which it doesn't on any of these we'll say create this if p dot favorite uh, numbers uh, dot length is greater than or equal to, and my font is going to combine those into a little more recognizable symbol. I'll say greater or equal than three. So I'll save that there. Let's see. Here we go. I need to unconsole log this. There we go. So now I have is awesome, is awesome, not for this one because it only has two, is awesome, is awesome, and not for that one. Okay, that worked just fine. Return a new array called young peeps, const young, uh, young peeps like that with peeps uh, who are 25 or younger. So what I want to do is come in here and say um, peeps, and I'm just going to filter that first one, and we'll grab them again as a P for a peep, and we'll say if p.age is uh, less than 25. All right, and then let's console.log this. There we go, young peeps. I guess I could have tabled it. Uh, so now I see only those younger than 25, all those older than 25 don't show. Perfect. All right, sort the favorite number properties from least to greatest for each peep in the peeps array. So I think the easiest way to do this, um, let's say peeps.for each 
And again, I'm going to grab P for a peep. And I'll come in here and say p.favorite uh, numbers dot sort. And then uh, with the sort, you can give it two values. So A and B, you can name it whatever you want. And then I'll just say A minus B. If that doesn't make sense here, uh, let me come in here <clears throat> and just hover over this sort. You can see what's going on here is it's basically you're going to give it a compare function to start with. So A and B, and then you can basically decide what to do with it on the other side. So it sorts an array in place, it mutates the original array and returns a reference to the same array. So let's see, probably the easiest way to show you this is to say peeps.4 each. And what I want to do is take p for peep and say console.log. And I'll just say p.favorite numbers. Since you can't actually see <laughs> what's here because uh, I'm sorting them from least to greatest. And now you should be able to see here one, two, three, four, five. Uh, if I were to come up here above this and do the same thing, you can see, oh, that's kind of confusing. <laughs> but here's the first one right here. And you can see how they're not necessarily sorted alphabetically or by number. So like 23 here is at the beginning of all these. Some of these are, but you see these aren't. But all of these starting right here should be just from least, least to greatest. And that's what they are. All right, so let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of that now that we've done it. Okay, return view true if every person has an age below 50 and false if not. So let's say something like um, const all under... 50 equals peeps dot every, and that's a method that says, does every single item in this array match whatever I pass it? So we're going to take the, the person, I guess, to be consistent. Let me wrap this in quotation or parentheses since I've been doing that so far. We'll say p dot age is, uh, let's see, less than 50, all under 50, right? Yeah, I think that works. Okay. Then I'll come in here and I'll console dot log this, and it should be true that they're all under 50 and they all are. All right, cool. Uh, create a function called find peep function. Find peep that returns a peep for an ID. So we'll do that. Passed in and returns not found if the peep does not exist. Call it for an ID that exists, one that does not. Okay, so, all right, so let's come in here. And now that we've got this, let's just say, um, let's see, peep found equals peeps dot find. So we're gonna use the find method to look for inside this array. And we're going to find any person where the person.id equals the ID that was passed in. So let's return, since we're supposed to return here. We'll say peep found. Um, if the peep is found, then we'll just return peep found. Otherwise, we'll return not found. All right, so that should work. Let me come in here now and say find peep. And I'll pass it an ID that I know exists, like one. And if I do that, let's see. I guess I need to console.log this. So let's console.log it. Find peep. And... There it is up here. So the very first, or I guess the second index, no, the first index uh, with ID of one. That's right, because I have it by ID here. And now let's do one that I know doesn't exist, like 12, and it should say not found, and it does. Cool. All right, six, create a new array called reversed peeps, const reversed peeps uh, with the peeps array order reversed. Now this one's a little tricky because what you might do is just say something like this. You might spread in reversed um, or peeps dot reverse, reverse like that. But if you do that, notice that it actually reverses the original array as well because this method here, you can see it mutates the array. So it mutates the original array. So if I don't want to mutate that, what I have to do is actually take this outside like this. So after the array has been spread in, then I want to change it up. And now this should go back to normal. And I should be able to come in here and let's console.table this thing. So let me remove that table like that. So now let's see, this is the reversed one. And this is the one at the bottom, the original one. So now I've got this reversed peeps array and I've got the other one, the original. Number seven, add an additional property on each peep object called favorite number sum with a single number value, which equals the total of all their favorite numbers. So basically total up all of their favorites into another property uh, called favorite number sum. So let's do that. So we'll say peeps. And here I think four, yeah, I guess four each works. I could also, I guess, map over this as well. Uh, map will return an array whereas for each just goes through each item in the array and does something. So in this case, that's really all I'm doing. I don't need to return an array, so let's keep it simple. And I'll say p.favorite numbers sum, favorite numbers sum, like that. I think that's what I'm supposed to call it, equals p.favorite numbers. And in this case, I think the easiest thing to do is to use a reduce function. So inside of here, I'm going to reduce on each of these. And you can pass it uh, 
basically you pass it a callback function inside of here. So you can name these first two things, whatever you want. But as you can see up here, you've got the current value, um, a previous value and the current value. Those are the two we're gonna pass. You can actually pass up to four items in here it takes. You only, we're only gonna pass in these first two, just kind of like the sort method as well. Here, we're gonna come in here, we'll take A and B. And what we wanna do is add A and B. So what that's gonna do is no matter how many are in here, in this list of favorite numbers for each of the items, it's going to loop through each of those, take the first one, let's say the first one is one and the second one is two, it's going to add them together. This will now be three, and it will pass that in as your A. So now this will be three, and it'll take the third item in the array and add it to it. And then here it'll add it together. Those will become the new A, and I'll just keep doing that until it's done with everything in this array. So we've got nested arrays, which is why we're using nested array methods. All right, so if I come in here, Let's see, that should is awesome. Favorite number array right there. So that's what we've got. They give me a little more space. Yeah, there you go. So 57, 19, 37, 39, 44, and 12. Um, maybe let's make sure that that's actually true. Let's see, didn't we have something up here where we like console.log to that? Nah, I don't remember where. So what we'll do is we'll say peeps dot for each. Uh, yeah, well, I guess what we can do is come down here. So let's say console.log uh, p.favorite numbers, numbers like that. Okay, so here we go. Let's just check this one here. So the last one, three and nine should be equal to 12 and it is. Okay, just wanted to double check that we had done that correctly. All right, three left, creating a new array called number one peeps. Let's do it. Const number one peeps uh, with all people that include a favorite number of one. Include only their names and ID. Okay, so we're going to have to basically create a new array and we're mapping over all the items and returning uh, different objects inside this array. All right, that, that that didn't make a lot of sense. Let me kind of walk you through it. So the first thing we need to do is filter. So we'll say peeps.filter and then we're going to grab each of the items as we go through it and we'll say p.favorite numbers dot includes and we just pass it one. So we want to know whether or not it includes it. And again, this is another array method. So now we've got one array method, two array methods in here. So whenever it includes one, then what I want to do is just map over those items. And I want to take, uh, let's call this like item or something like that. We could call it P, but that might be kind of confusing. So let's do this. And whoops, we're going to map over this. And I'll space this out in a second to make this a little more clear. Uh, and we'll say, let's see, let's keep this uncompressed and then I'll compress it in a second. So we're going to return an ID with the p.id and a name with the p.name. Um, I guess we can close that off. Then I'll come in here and let's console log this number one peeps. Includes map is not a function. Okay, well, let's see what we got going on. See, I need this filter to be closed out. I think that should be right now. Reference p is not an item. Ah, this is item <laughs> dot name and item.name because now I'm inside this loop. All right, here we go. So what I've got now is anybody that includes one in their array. Maybe I need to come back up here, p.favorite numbers. Let's do that again, console.log, p.favorite numbers. Okay, so this first one and this fourth one are the only ones that include that. So Chris and Tina, and then right here, this should be Chris and Tina. It is cool. Uh, so let me kind of walk you through this. So what we've got, I can space this out as long as I don't put a semicolon. But what I've got is peeps. And the first thing I'm going to do is filter all those and say for each of the people, I'm going to go through them, look at their favorite numbers array, use this array method and ask, does it include a one in it? If it does, then I'm just going to take those items and I'm going to map over each of those, grab each of those items, which are these entire objects here. And what I want to pull out of it is just the item.id and the item.name. Now we can actually compress this a little bit more if, let's see, I guess I didn't need to get rid of all of that, but um, let's enclose this here and enclose this here. And I'm returning this, but normally these brackets would be like for the other side of the arrow function. So if you're returning just a um, object and you want it to be implicit, you can actually wrap it like that in parentheses and it should work. Let's see, there it goes, should be the exact same. That doesn't make sense, don't worry. You can just use the explicit return like we did a second ago, like this return, and then wrap all this like you would for any other object, and you should be set. But let me go ahead and return it back to what we just did uh, like that. 
Okay, cool. I'm going to get rid of this and come up here and let's console log or just comment that out in case we need it since we've already had to create it a few times. All right, combine all peeps from the number one peeps above, eight above the one we just did, which are also in the young peeps, uh, number two array, into a new array called fresh peeps. <laughs> Include peeps with unique IDs only from the young peeps array. All right, so there's some challenges here. Hopefully we can get our mind around this. Const fresh peeps. And I think the first thing I want to do is just spread in the number one peeps. So this is making a copy, a shallow copy of this number one peeps array. If I were to comment this out or console log it out, you see I've just got two. These are fresh peeps uh, that just include people who like the number one from up above. Okay, we already knew that. Now let's come in here and uh, maybe let's console.table this just so it looks similar uh, to what's below. And I got to get rid of the, this magic that was added by my extension. Okay, cool. Uh, fresh peeps, number one peeps. Okay, now what I want to do is say young peeps uh, for each. Let's see, do I want to do it for each? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to uh, loop through each of the items here. For each one, uh, let's just return if. Let's see, what I want is if the fresh peeps dot find. Uh, let's loop through each of these fresh peeps and we'll say, because I'm basically adding this what, fresh peeps. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's right. Young peeps. I'm looping through each of these young peeps and asking if the fresh peeps, if when looping back through this, if the fresh peeps, let's call it this, fp for fresh peeps dot id equals the p dot id. So this should be only unique values returned. If so, then I want the fresh peeps dot push the P. I think that's right. Let's see. Okay, so I added one to that. That doesn't look right. Okay, let's look back through this. Oh, what I want is if it doesn't match. So I just need to come in here, do this, I think. Okay, yeah, there we go. So um, I guess let's first of all, console.log, uh, the young peeps as well. So that should be up here. And then let's console.log the fresh peeps right here. Let's get rid of this one. Okay, so what I'm looking at is two of these right here. I've got Chris, Tina, Megan, Juan, Lynn, Chris, Megan, Juan, Lynn. And what I want to do is only return um, ones that are unique, unique IDs. Okay, so that should work. It should be the same thing. Now, I could use like a set as well, um, but that's not really an array method. So I think what I did here was fine. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to keep it like that. Uh, console.table, fresh peeps. Now, it should just include the unique values, and it does. Although, I don't get their ages. Oh, that's because fresh peeps doesn't have ages. Uh, or number one peeps. Nope. Young peeps, number one peeps. I think that was it. Yeah, they don't, have, they don't have ages. Okay, last one. Return a single value representing the total of all favorite numbers for anyone with an is awesome property set to true. Hint, it should be 159. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's uh, assign this to a constant variable called total of all favorite numbers. Um, that's fine, all right. And then what I wanna do is filter. So we'll say filter, and just for clarity's sake, I'll put this on the next line. Filter, and I'm gonna, again, grab each item in this array, and we'll filter over it, and we'll say p.isAwesome. So this should be a truthy statement. So basically, the only thing that we'll get through is if it says is awesome is equal to true. If that's the case, then, uh, let's see, I want to return a single value. So I guess I just reduce, right? I think that'll work. So we'll use the same kind of thing we did up above, A and B. And we'll say uh, A plus B. And let's see, um, not plus B, but plus B dot favorite number sum, right? Now, I can also pass it alternatively, or in addition to all this, an initial starting value. So let me start it at zero. And that, I think, should work. So if I come in here, does it equal 159? Let's see. 159. Okay, cool. Uh, that works. And I did this. Uh, I must have done this ahead of time to get that value. Um, I make these things and then have to go back to them later. But uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. We used reduce and map and for each and filters and finds and pushes. Uh, what else do we use? Um, filter number. I think that's most of them. We use reverse. Um, we wrote little functions, we used sort, we used every uh, for each. I think I already said that one. So yeah, lots of these in the second one. 
Uh, there are obviously more advanced things we can do as well, but I think those work best for like an API. So it, maybe I'll do a challenge for an API. Well, if this was a help to you, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to do more of these in the future. I've got some fun projects coming up, uh, kind of larger builds. And so I hope that'll be a big help to lots of you. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. Spread the word and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.